The following is a presentation of the Missouri Sports Network. Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for being here once again. This is the latest episode of Huddle Up here on the Missouri Sports Network inside of the Pizza Ranch studio. There's a lot to get to today. We got some people gloating over their Super Bowl picks. We have not. This is our first show after the Super Bowl, so we want to make sure that we get it all in and get some people their glory. And, you know, I think DA is one or maybe two for 15 this year. But he did get the last one right, and so I had Philly. Guy had Philly, and D.A. just said, oh, I'm going to go different than y'all. I'm going to pick Kansas City. D.A., congratulations. You get the first words. Kansas City won. What are your thoughts, my friend? Hey, right here, boys and girls. <laughs> I called it, and I'm one for 33 this year so far, Johnny, <laughs> so I'm off the snide. I finally got my first correct pick, so – um, no, I, th I thought it was a very entertaining game. And the way it started off, I thought the first one to 75 was going to be Super Bowl champs. I mean, it was just uh, – and then the second half, I, I think both defenses settled in, and um, or I should say Kansas City's settled in. Um, and I think you saw Patrick Mahomes – uh, I, you can't call him the goat right now because he still he still has a lot of football left to play, and Tom Brady holds a very, very high standard. But I think he has established himself as the, uh, I guess the next person to step up in that. You know, is he the greatest quarterback playing today? I th I think uh, now that Brady's out of the game, I th you know. I think he's got to be in that discussion. Well, who are you going to take? I mean, who else in the league? I mean, who, what quarterback are you going to take in front of him right now? I mean, that's, that's active. I'm not. <laughs> he's number one. If I got first pick out on the playground, yeah, he's my guy. Well, you well, can't really – you can't argue that because he just won. Uh, I didn't I didn't think he did anything spectacular. I didn't think he was out. I didn't think he was outstanding. They won the game, so you can't take that from him. But Correct. I didn't. He didn't but, make any throws that are outstanding to me. But did you see him hobble off right before the second half? Yeah, he, he plays to the crowd a little bit. Uh, everyone, I mean, <laughs> yeah, everyone hobbled. Oh, come on! I mean, come on, man. He's a little bit dramatic. I didn't see him hobbling two days later in the, at that parade. I saw him hobbling at the parade. I saw him staggering, at the parade. staggering, staggering. Parade. I didn't see him hobbling. I mean, you know, it's football. He, he got a little, you know, a little injury. He just he played to the crowd. I thought Mahomes played an okay game. I, I believe it's. I don't think he passed for two hundred yards. I don't think he did anything spectacular. They won. Winners can gloat. Winners can say, hey, regardless of what you say, I won. Kansas City gets to say that. I got to be quiet. I picked Philadelphia. Guy, you picked Philly. But being quiet is not your style. What you got to say, buddy? Well, I tell you what, you know, with about 10 minutes to go in the second quarter, I thought Philly was going to run them out, you know, just run them out of the stadium. I thought it was going to turn it into a boat race. And everybody talks about that penalty, you know, the holding penalty there with under two minutes to go. That puts the Chiefs in a situation where they can kick the game-winning field goal and almost run the clock out. You know, they leave eight, ten seconds on the clock. The biggest penalty was there on that third down and one when they get in that little scrum position with the Chiefs never stopped all day long, and they get the offsides penalty and or the encroachment penalty and set, puts them in a passing situation, and Jalen Hurts just drops the ball. No, they got a, it was a false start. It was offensive penalty. They got a false start. 
Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, go ahead, buddy. Yeah. And that, that's the biggest play of the game because then Bolton returns that for a touchdown. And you look at time of possession, just in the first half, you know, it was almost two to one. Uh, maybe it was two to one. It was almost two to one for the game. But I think the changes that that, they, that the Chiefs made offensively and defensively in the second half, I think I think I think Andy Reid just outcoached him. But he's been there, and that that's a big thing. Is you know having been there. This is Mahomes' third Super Bowl. This is Andy Reid's fifth Super Bowl. Yeah, you know, having been there in that situation when Jalen Hurts had never been in that situation, uh, Sirianni had never been in that situation. Um, you know, I think that was a big part of it, and, and they're and they'll learn from that, and they're going to be good. And they got the best offensive line in football. They got the best defensive line in football. And Hurts, you know, he turned into you know a second you know second vote getter in the MVP. So I'll be back. You know, you yeah, take a look I mean, at that. I'm sorry, Johnny, didn't mean to step on your toes. Yeah, if you take a look at that first half, though, with the uh, possession time of possession dif- differential. You've got to take into account that that whole stretch where the Eagles had a pretty good drive going. Hurts fumbles, Bolton goes in and scores, and they get the ball back and put together a pretty long drive. So, I mean, that's kind of a misnomer um, with the defense scoring and, and what have you. So, I think there was a little more emphasis put on that than probably what should have been if you take a look at, you know, hey, here's what happened. Um, here's, you know. Here's the here's the entire uh, first half. The, I think that's why uh, the time of possession it was it was kind of a misnomer, uh, so to speak. But I, I'm with I'm with uh, with Guy. I, I really thought the way um, that first half went, it really pointed toward the Eagles opening the the game up in the second half. You know, and and kind of keeping Kansas City at arm's length the rest of the way. Yeah, that's fair. I, I mean, I thought the game was well played. Uh, it was an entertaining game. I just don't believe that uh, the holding on on the, on the DB Granberry. Uh, I don't believe that that play. I don't believe he impeded his progress to a point of a penalty. I've had this debate with people since the game. That penalty, you could call that every single play in the NFL. Ray Lewis, Hall of Famer, and others said the same thing. You just can't call that. Uh, and the same thing happened to Cincinnati last year when L.A. They got a little grab down in the red zone. L.A. gets a penalty, gets first down, goes in the score. It affects the championship. It affects our lives. It affects their lives. Uh, I just didn't like it. I mean, if he if he put his arm, I'm more if you put your arm around him, then you're impeding the progress. That little shirt tug, I mean, that's, come on. We, we got to play through that. But it got called. Uh, congratulations to Kansas City. Uh, the parade was something else. Now they win the game, they get back to Kansas City, and I think someone lost a Lombardi trophy. Guy, what did you see on that? Well, yeah, you, you're watching Patrick Mahomes carry the Lombardi trophy, and I don't know if it was a replica, because uh, I don't know if I'd have put it in his hands with as inebriated as he was, but he was trying to sign autographs, and he was giving pins back, and one time he handed the trophy back instead of the pin and walked off and had to go back and get the trophy. Uh, he just – he was not in a good situation. And it, and it wasn't a good look. I mean, I understand you want to party, but you can do that at, at you know, in, at behind closed doors. Um, you know, and it's in, and then you got Jalen Watson, the rookie defensive back. You know, they got to put him in a wheelchair. I mean, they got to get him off the bus, put him in a wheelchair, and take him to get some, I don't know, fluids or something in him because he was – I mean, he was hammered and, and just wasn't a good look. And I understand they're all grown men. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, did, I just I wasn't a big fan of it. I'm okay with them partying. I don't have any problem with that. But you know, don't don't get that bad in front of it. I mean, there was a million people there. I don't I don't believe that. There's not there's not even a million people in Kansas City. I heard someone say eight hundred to a million uh, eight hundred thousand to a million. I'm like, that's like everybody in Kansas City. That's like their whole metropolitan area going. We're going this parade. It was it was not a million people, but what do you got, DA? I mean, come on. I, yeah, I, I will tell you this. Um, I did notice on Twitter uh, the night before the parade that a lot of schools uh, were canceling practices and what have you. Smith, I mean, all the way up to Smithville and um, up towards St. Joe and, uh, you know, 
down to the south side, uh, east side, what have you. I I don't know about. Uh, I don't want to be Donald Trump and start making estimations on crowds. I don't want to be not that guy, but I will. T- I will tell you this: if I ever am involved on a Super Bowl team, you're wheeling me out. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Yay, D-A-A. That's what I'm talking about. You Bring the stretcher. Here, Bring Brother, the stretcher. Thank buddy. you. I'm, I'm going hardcore. 1999 <laughs> Prince style. That's right. I'm not right. worried about what you're thinking about the look of things. I just want to. I worked my tail off my whole life. I want a championship. Boo the guy. Yay the DA. I'm not driving. <laughs> I'm just gonna. Drive. I'm on a bus. I'm. I'm acting a fool. I'm acting a fool. I'm gonna show myself. I'm gonna show some. I'm gonna show some character. Some character flaws I might have. Uh, they had a well, good time. Well, and we talked about this. Uh, you're yeah. Johnny. You're from St. Louis, and yeah. hey, they they like their they like their beer in St. Louis. Yeah. What did they do when the Blues won the uh, the the Stanley Cup? Couldn't act a fool. Acted a fool, and and, yeah. and hey, there were people in the crowd acting a fool with them. Yeah. And that. you know, I mean, Ooh. it is what it is. Go it to is scoreboard guy. Scoreboard guy and boo the crap out of him. Boo. <laughs> hey, you know what? I'll say this. I don't know if the Chiefs, they, they got two. It doesn't cement them as a dynasty. I'm not being a hater, but, I mean, uh, we'll see if they can win back-to-backs. Uh, if you win some back-to-backs, I'll really go, okay. Then now you're cementing yourself. Uh, we'll see what happens to them. Eli Manning has two NFL championship rings, um, Super Bowl rings, so – We'll see what happens, guys. Uh, I'm going to end the segment on that, guys. That's for me. That's it. Anybody got any predictions next year? Kansas City Chiefs guy, what, 17 and 0? What do you got, buddy? I don't know if the Chiefs go 17 and 0, but uh, they got to be the favorite going in. Yeah. 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 Definitely favorites. Um, But there's a lot of other teams that are poised. They're going to have to have a good offseason. I agree. Uh, They're going to have to keep some guys and have to sign some guys to get back to where they were. Hey, Kansas City, this buzz for you. Enjoy your championship. You won it. Congratulations. No one fell off the bus. No harm, no foul. Hey, we'll be right back here on the Missouri Sports Network. You're listening to Hull Up. We'll be right back. Don't move. The new Sicilian pizza from Pizza Ranch, served in squares. Squares? Yes, squares of skillet crust with sausage, pepperoni, fresh basil, shaved parmesan, and sauce on the top. Sauce on top? That's new. Get another taste of the old world with our new Italian chopped salad. Hey, that has pepperonis too. Sicilian pizza and Italian chopped salad on the buffet for a limited time at Pizza Ranch. Mm -hmm. Mm Mmm. Chevy Silverado. It's got the power you want and the capability you need to do the job so you can get to the important work. Find new moments, find new roads. Get a $500 cash allowance on all 2022 Silverado pickups with a 2.7 liter turbo engine. Plus, unlock your code to claim $500 Chevy CyberCash. Visit ChevyCyberCash.com today. We're going to move from the Super Bowl, talk about a little bit about our, uh, our local sports here. We're going to talk about our favorite competitive university, Missouri State University over Murray State. I'm still trying to figure out a couple of things. Number one is, how is Murray a state? I'm still trying to figure that out. Uh, but they'll take the name and run with it. We took the victory. Uh, 84-69 victory Missouri State had last night. Pretty impressive victory. They're 11 and 8 in the conference, 16 and 14 overall, heading into Arch Madness. Season got a season finale at Indiana State this Sunday. Uh, Guy, let us give me your thoughts about the Bears, where they are, the seeding, and what you think you'll see uh, coming up in March Madness. Arch Madness, excuse me. Well, right now they're you know they're the 11. Or the, I'm sorry, they're the six seed. They're going to play the 11 seed, which is Illinois Chicago. Uh, if it ended today. The Bears have one more game on Sunday. They've got uh, Indiana State coming in, who right now is a three seed, who if the Bears get by that, and it's not really called a play-in round now, 
which is kind of the opening round. If they get by that, that's who they would see would be Indiana State. So an opportunity here, I mean, do you show them some things on Sunday? Are, are you planning for things that you're not going to show them on Sunday that, you know, you know it's going to – because you may play them on Friday, you know, in the in the tournament. Um, but I think they played really well against against Murray State. They won 84-69. They really – they hit 13 threes, I think, in that contest. And that's kind of been something that, that really they've struggled with this year uh, from, from the three-point line. But, man, when they get hot – there's probably not a better shooting team from behind the arc than the Bears if they're if they're on. Um, so I'm looking I'm looking forward to that. Uh, the Lady Bears right now are probably in they're in that three four seed, but there's a three way top at tie at the top with teams that you know are all you know what sixteen and three or whatever it is. But and they're playing really well right now also. So uh, and it's but but the Bears, I think Dana Ford needs you know if he can somehow get two wins in that tournament, uh, that's really going to help solidify him. Well, D.A., with that being said, I think Dana, Dana's looking to win that whole thing. I think that's what we're that's the, the, the course he's on. I think everything he's been doing this year has been building up for him to get to that tournament and make a, a deep run. Uh, D.A., what do you think their chances are of, of pulling off a couple of three wins up there and getting to the tournament? Uh, I think they've got a very good chance. Uh, they've just got to get right at the right time. And that's what it's all about. It's not necessarily um, who's been best throughout the course of a season. Yeah, I mean, if a team gets hot, uh, for instance, North Carolina last year, uh, you know, dang near won the national championship. Truth be known, they probably should have. And, um, you know, they barely got into the tournament. So it, it, that, that's what it's all about this time of year. Uh, Got to stay healthy throughout the rest of the way and, and go into um, – the Valley conference healthy. Uh, but at the same time, uh, those kids believe in Dana. They, they, they're, they're buying what he's selling. And um, I think they've got a good a shot as, as anybody. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. If you, if we went, if we moved a little bit toward the center of our state, the university of Missouri, the Mizzou Tigers putting together a pretty decent season, had a very exciting overtime win yesterday over Mississippi state 66, 64. Uh, Crowd looked like they were into it. Very enthusiastic game. A uh, little bit lower scoring, but very well played. Uh, DH, give me your thoughts on the Tigers and moving forward. What do you see from them? Yeah, that was a must win last night. Um, and they've got a couple more they need to win. They finish off with Georgia this weekend. They're at LSU. Uh, and, and, and that was at Georgia. At LSU. And then they have Ole Miss. Uh, they really need to win two or three, and to solidify where they're at, they need to win all three and win the first game. Uh, if I think if they win two of three and win the first game of the SEC tournament, uh, they're in. ESPN uh, recently had them as a number 10 seed. Um, I think if they can win out and win two games in the SEC tournament, that will bump them up um, probably to a seven or eight seed, I'm guessing. But it's very important that they finish. They're eight and seven in the conference right now, twenty and eight overall. They've got to finish above five hundred in the conference. I think that the uh, selection committee really takes a look at at conference play, and being above that five hundred mark uh, plays a big role in. Um, you know, they just can't really afford any slip ups from here on out. They need to win win the games they're supposed to win. Um, they're with you. Good, Good say. They're they're just not any good on the road. I mean, they're three and five, you know, on the road right now. Fifteen and three at right. home. Number one, I don't know how you have eighteen home games and eight road games, but uh, that that's a little quirky. But they just they do not play well on the road, and maybe that's because they're just not comfortable because they're not on the road. You know, you look at that just eight games on the road, but the other teams have played between, you know, uh, probably ten and twelve. I mean, Kentucky's only played four four road games as well, but you know they're sitting in that seven spot right now, just behind you know a half game behind you know Vanderbilt, Auburn, and then a game and a half behind Tennessee. So they could move up if they can win these last couple of games. Yeah, I think Missouri is definitely going to make it to the tournament. I think when they get there, they'll make some noise. I'm still trying to figure out what's going on with Isaiah Mosley. We could have used him here. They're not going to use him there. Uh, I wonder. I don't know how this transfer portal works, but I can't see him sit, sitting around another year. 
and not playing. Uh, so, but we wish the young man well. Um, we wish the Missouri Tigers well. I did want to bring up locally that the, the Drury Lady Panthers are putting together quite a season also. Uh, and I know they'll start their run here for the Division II National Championship coming up. Uh, guys, before we end this segment here, anybody want to add anything locally on the collegiate level? Yes. Central Methodist uh, up to the north of us. Just today got the uh, number one ranking in the nation in NAIA uh, girls or women's basketball. So uh, they're they're getting they're undefeated on the season, and uh, they won the first round of the uh, of their conference tournament, and looking to make a big push, possibly a national championship uh, here in the within the next month. Congratulations to them! Always a very solid program, solid school there, yes. very solid football. Basketball has always been a place in which athletes were able to go and excel, uh, not just uh, uh, on the uh, court and gridiron, but also in the classroom as well. Very awesome university there. Uh, gentlemen, we're going to wrap this segment up. We'll come back with our final segment. Talk about a little bit about high school sports. Anything else we want to tie some loose ends in. Uh, remember, you listen to Huddle Up here on the Missouri Sports Network. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. It means the world to me to have a job where I can help farmers. That's what I want to do, is be here for them. Alan became a counselor in a rough time. He just has a feeling for what we as farmers are going through. I learned that there's not a given in life. It takes a team, not only us, but country financial. And I've learned that there's people that also are going to watch out for us and that care. We believe banking should make your life greater. It starts with affordable options to meet today's needs and tomorrow's dreams. From smart account options that fit your style to flexible loans for what comes next. It means convenient ways to access and manage your money whenever you need it and wherever you're headed. Most of all, it takes great support. Someone you can count on for trusted guidance and to be there for you every step of the way. Great options, great convenience, great support for life. Great Southern Bank, understanding what really matters. Welcome back, everyone, to Huddle Up here on the Missouri Sports Network inside of the Pizza Ranch studio. It is that time. We're going to talk a little bit of high school athletics, mainly high school basketball. As you know, the districts are starting. Smaller schools start this week. The larger schools start next week. Guy, you're our resident basketball guru. Well, let me take that back. I don't want DA to kick me under the table. We got two <laughs> resident local basketball group rules. I'm going to let you both sit back and explain to me and tell me who you feel uh, it might come out of some of these tough districts, starting with the smaller schools, guy. Who do you see? Who do you like? And what are some of the seedings that you people should be aware of? And should be, possibly, be on the lookout for possible upsets. Yeah, we, we may have an upset tonight as we're filming this. As Mansfield was down at halftime to uh, Liberty Mountain View by three. And I haven't seen an update there, but by the time this airs, you'll be able to find all the scores at, at scoreboardguy.net and uh, all the updates, and we'll get to that. But Mansfield's a tremendous team. I mean, they, I think they're ranked number one and have been most of the season in, in that class uh, three district, and Thayer is in that same district, and I think they're ranked third right now. And so I know they're licking their chops, sitting in the bleachers right now, hoping that maybe they don't have to play Thayer in that district championship. And that's being played at Houston, Missouri, there in that class too. Um, and, and one thing that was a di little different this year is they, in the class, in the smaller classes, the girls played uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. The boys played Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So it's, if you've got two teams in that, in a district quarterfinal, semifinal, or championship from your school, uh, you're going to have to go two different, two different nights to watch them. And I think they did that because a lot of these teams are playing in two different places, uh, you know, so they don't want to eliminate, you know, the opportunities there with the new rules and things like that and, and the new uh, championship quadrant or whatever multiplier they came up with uh, has changed some kids around. I mean, there's – you got a Springfield Catholic whose girls and boys are not only in the two different districts, they're in two different classes. Um, so it's, it's kind of confusing to folks, but uh, – the schools will let them know, but you know, you look at you got Mansfield and Thayer, uh, you know, in class two. I'm sorry, in class three and class two, uh, and that up well, that other class three district at uh, at Fair Grove on the boys' side, it's loaded because your semifinals there, 
you've got Sparta, who's the one seed. You've got Greenwood as the four seed, so that's the matchup tonight. At the bottom of the bracket, you got Fairgrove and Stratford. All four of those teams have been in the top ten this year, and three of them in the top five. So that is a brutal district to get through. Um, and then, uh, you know, they, they're going to have to deal with Mansfield or Thayer or something like that probably in that next round. So uh, there's a lot of great basketball to be played. Classes four, five, and six start next week. And you look at that class six district at Ozark, uh, just on the boys' side, Nexa hands down the one seat. They're undefeated. You know, they and they've got one more game. They're 25 and 0 right now. They're the one seed. Ozark struggling a little bit early on, but they're playing really well right now. But they're the eight seed. So Nixa could conceivably go in undefeated to their district and lose to an eight seed. And then you still have Republic and Kickapoo and Carthage and the Osho uh, that have all played well. Carthage played Nixa to two points last week. Uh, Neosho's kind of snuck up on it. I mean, they're 19 and six. And nobody knows where they came from. And uh, so they're having a good season. Uh, you know, on the girls' side, you've still got Kickapoo in that class six. They're going to be a handful. You got West Plains, defending class five state champion. Uh, they're going to be a handful in that district or in that class in class five coming out of out of Southwest Missouri. And you know, on the boys' side, it's, you know, you got Cape, you got Cape Central, you've got Cardinal Ritter, you know, up out of the St. Louis area that's playing really well. And then Class six right now, I think the class of class six is probably Staley up in the in the class in the uh, Kansas City area, but they're gonna have to deal with you know that Ozark or whoever probably in the semifinals who comes out of that Ozark district, which is what they did last year, and Nixa beat them to get to the championship or then Nixa lost to CBC in the class six state championship. So there's there's uh there is this this is the most fun time of the year because you're gonna go into this, then you're gonna go to the final four, and then the NCAA tournament it's going on. And then that takes us right into baseball. This is the best time of the year because it's, for me, it's still shorts and a sweatshirt right now with the weather's been great. And I ain't got them on my yard yet. And uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's a good thing as long as I can keep from tripping over any wood, I'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> DA, you up, my friend. What are your thoughts about this high school closing out the districts? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, to to kind of reiterate what Guy talked about, and I'll try to explain it the best way that I can. The success factor plays a lot uh, with the changing of different schools being in different classes or different uh, uh, districts. But it it was also the girls in the past. Their district alignment was always set up on the boys' side. Okay, so you could have uh, a handful of teams throughout the state, uh, a handful to a dozen teams throughout the state who uh, had a boys program, but didn't have enough girls to come out for the girls program. So in some cases, you'd have a one or two team district. And so what they wanted to do on the on the on the girls side was have a true uh, state tournament based on team, the number of teams that uh, had enough kids to play, especially at the class one level, obviously, uh, along with the success factor. And that's what changed up. Uh, that's why the boys' districts look so much different than the girls' districts, uh, because they've done away with those two-team girls' districts um, and, and made it a full field. Well, that adjusted people from around the state. Uh, to fill in who meets up in sectionals, quarterfinals, and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. So that's just a brief, uneducated yeah. explanation of, of kind of what's going on yeah. uh, with the state tournament. Um, it, it makes sense on, on, on one hand, uh, if you look at it from a coach's standpoint, and, you know, you don't want to have a two-team district. That, I mean, mm -hmm. You know, there's some teams that have have six or seven or eight teams in the district and uh, so forth, so on. But anyway, on the other side, though, it makes it awfully tough for logistics for schools, uh, not only if you're in a different class, but I mean, realistically, you could have a girls team that is class three playing a state final four, totally different weekend than your boys team. Uh, that may be class three or four or what have you, you know, just the opposite play on different weekends. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, it yeah. logistically speaking, it makes it awfully, awfully tough right. on, on a lot of these schools that are strapped budget wise anyway, 
uh, and and for parents, I mean, God forbid you got a boy and a girl playing basketball. You're, I mean, you're racking up some serious miles throughout the week exactly. just to go watch district basketball. So uh, there's there's pluses and minuses uh, as there is to anything, but that that's kind of a yeoman's way of explaining what's going on with the state tournaments at this point in time. Sure, sure. And there well, are some teams out there that could have both boys and girls playing the final four. I mean, you look at, I mean, yeah. South Iron, you know, is one. If the South Iron right. girls can get by Delta, uh, you've got Chadwick, but they'll have to get by South both South Irons, right? Uh, you know, to get there or Delta uh, to get there. You could have, I mean, conceivably, you could have Nixa, uh, you know, boys and girls, maybe Kickapoo boys and girls make a uh, make the final four. And um, so you could have, and, and of course, all those teams that I mentioned, they're in the same classifications, uh, you know, with their boys and girls. So they'd be playing on the same weekend, but there's got to be someone out there that maybe has a chance, you know, to, to make a run uh, in two different classes. Yeah. Well, we wish them all luck. Uh, and, and and I know I've seen some of them play this year. I know Kickapoo has a good team. Nick's, like you said, been undefeated. We'll have to see. We'll know in a week or two. We'll know in two weeks for sure what's going on. Guy, tell us about the tip-off club. I heard you got some new awards coming up uh, and tell people how they can attend and, and, and where they, if they need to find out more information about it. Yeah, we've, uh, we've met uh, every Monday uh, at pizza ranch. Johnny was there uh, this, this past Monday. Uh, we have schools that come in. We try and get two or three of the Springfield public schools involved. Uh, and then we bring in three or four of the area schools, which is a new kind of a new thing this year. Um, and then, you know, we bring in our college coaches and, and at this time of the year, the college coaches, you know, Monday was president's day. So a lot of them were still practicing cause they didn't have to go to class. They're practicing at that time to give their players the evening off. Um, this Monday will be the last one, uh, of the season. We'll pass out the awards and we do have, uh, two new awards, uh, like we did in football. We had not only the, uh, Springfield city player of the year and coach of the year, we also had the Springfield Area Player of the Year and Coach of the Year, and and that the Area Coach of the Year in football this past year was John Perry, um, and then Ramon Green was the Player of the Year. Um, we uh, this uh, this Monday we will have a very similar situation: City Player of the Year, and when I say City Player, that's anyone in the city that's Springfield Catholic, and then all the SPS schools plus New Covenant um, is added on. Uh, to that one uh, as well as uh, I think Rush is in there, but they've not been uh, been a part of it yet this year. And then, you know, then our area schools, coach of the year and player of the year, and we also give out a sportsmanship award to uh, it's a team award, and it's actually voted on by the uh, Southwest Missouri Basketball Officials Association. They make nominations for the the teams that they feel like had the best sportsmanship throughout the year, and we'll do one for the city and one for the area, uh, the city have had, uh, names with them. Marty Edelman was the, was the player of the year. Marty Edelman, a long time writer for the Springfield news leader, Jack Roberts, who started the program at Glendale high school, um, is the, his name, you know, for the coach of the year. We will have two new names for our area player of the year and our area coach of the year. And I'm not going to unveil, unveil those yet. Um, because that's a kind of a surprise uh, to the people that will be uh, uh, in the room in one way or another, I hope. But that'll be Monday. The college coaches are invited to come and speak, but they usually go first. Um, NCAA, though, does not allow uh, Missouri State jury coaches the rules to, to be involved because it would be an unfair recruiting violation because you'll have kids in the room. And uh, so they do not they do not participate. But Evangel, BBC, uh, they're more than welcome because they don't have those rules. So uh, that's Monday, 1130. Um, you come in, all the coaches' meals are comped. It's paid for. Um, Don West does a tremendous job of emceeing the event. Um, he knows the coaches and he and he studies. You know, I sent him an email on who's coming. Um, so he's got kind of where they're going to be in districts and, uh, and uh, how to introduce them. And we always – Started off uh, with Coach uh, Coach Bill Rowe always gives an update on Art Haynes. We haven't seen Art Haynes since September 12th. Um, he gives that update, and then Wayne Haynes uh, comes in. He formerly with the FCA, and 
uh, he, he blesses the meal and then we just stay there and eat. We were there till about two 30, uh, this, this past, uh, this past Monday, cause the coaches were out of school. They just hung around, talk. It's, it's a great atmosphere and, and the coaches enjoy it. Great. Thank you, God. Thank you. Yeah. You should be there. Pizza Ranch right in the battlefield mall, uh, right off the of Glenstone exit there, uh, come out at 1130. Uh, I think the, the, it starts at 12. Can't, can't wait uh, to see who, who wins these awards this year. Gentlemen, we're going to wrap it up there. Anything you want to add? Anybody? Well, hey, continue to pray for Art Haynes. We brought him up, uh, you know, keeping their thoughts and prayers. He's He is getting better. Uh, it's just been a very, very slow process, right. but he's been off the vent now for three and a half weeks. And uh, they can keep him off of that and keep the pneumonia away from him, then he, they'll be able to move him back down here where he can do rehab where folks can go in and spend some more time with him. Okay. Well, we'll definitely send our prayers up to Art Haynes, to Art Haynes and his family, and hopefully it's speedy recovery. Uh, gentlemen, it's been another great segment, another great show. We want to thank everyone out there for listening to Hold Up here on the Missouri Sports Network. We'll catch you next week. Stay tuned. Come back. See this has been a presentation of the Missouri Sports Network. Thank you for tuning in.